and welcome to Ms. Shivik's video on equivalent expressions and the distributive property. Now that we've done investigation 4.1 where we were looking at the relationships between even and odd numbers and talking about how even numbers always had 2 as a factor um, and odd numbers if you tried to make 2 as a factor would always have that little extra bit on the side. Um, I want to talk a little bit about use those ideas and talk a little bit about equivalent expressions in something called the distributive property. The distributive property is something you're going to be hearing a lot about and is very important in your mathematical life going forward. So getting an idea of it now and how it works is really important. So as you can see, um, right now I have the problem modeled in front of me of 6 plus 4. And using that idea of even numbers, um, I have set my 6 up is two rows of three, and I have set my four up as two rows of two, right? So we can all look at that and say, well, that's six, that's four. Two rows of three is the same as six, and two, uh, six and two rows of two is the same as four. So what if I actually add those two numbers together like we did in investigation 4.1? Well, all we need to do really is push the green numbers and the red numbers together, right? the red green tiles and the red tiles. And now, whoops, do, 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 sorry, rogue eraser destroying my beautiful work there, right? Now we have, we still have our two rows of three and we still have our two rows of two, but they're all together now, right? So essentially we have two rows of, what's three plus two? Two rows of five. And that is the distributive property in a nutshell. What the distributive property says is that two rows of three, or six, plus two rows of two, four, is the exact same thing as two rows of five, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about how this re relates to the area of a rectangle. Well, let's look up at our rectangle, right? Initially, we had two smaller rectangles, or a rectangle and a square in this case, right? Um, we had one with dimensions of two by three, and another with dimensions of two by two. So an area of six and an area of four, and we put them together and have a rectangle with an area of 10, right? Because two times five equals 10. So like I was saying, in a nutshell, this is the distributive property. The idea that two plus three um, 2 times 3 plus 2 times 2 is the same as 2 times 5, because 5 is just 2 plus 3, right? So, obviously, this is what this we're doing different representations of the number 10 here, right? And we could keep going. We could do it. We could break it in different ways, right? If we broke this back up, we could split it like this, right? And we could say, well, now I have two rows of 1 plus two rows of 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Two rows of one plus two rows of four. I still have 10 things, right? If I put them all back together, two times one plus two times four is the same as two times five, because five is just one plus four. I can stick them all back together, and I'm back to my 10 again. Or I could switch it around from the way we had it originally, right? And say two rows of two plus two rows of three, right? It's the same thing as I had before, except for now my two by two is first and my two by three is second. So two rows of two plus two rows of three is the same as two rows of five, because five is just two plus three. Put them all back together again, okay? So that's great. You know, and we've been talking a lot about even numbers and odd numbers, and so that is why we are always using, because we were talking about even numbers, we were using this idea, because even numbers have two as a factor, right? We were using the idea of making rows of two, right? Now, not everything in your life is going to be even, right? It could be something that is odd, okay? So, for example, let's take the number 15, right? So let's think of a way we could write 15. Probably the easiest one to think about is 5 plus 10, right? Well, you're, you're thinking, okay, well, great. You know, you were using the 2 before, but I don't have 2 as a common factor of 5 and 10, right? I've got an odd number and an even number because, as we learned, right, odds plus evens are always going to be odd because that 5 is always going to have that little extra tail 
on it. So two isn't always going to work to, to, to illustrate the distributive property. So two, in the case of an even number, we always know is a common factor of any set of even numbers. But here we have an odd and an even. We're going to have to look for a different common factor. And the greatest common factor of five and ten, actually the only common factor other than one, is five. Right? So we could do the same thing, but instead of using a two, we could use five on the side. Right? Well, how could I re represent five? Well, five would be five groups of one. Right? If you imagine I had my five red squares going down the side here. And ten would be the same thing. I'm going to use that common factor of five. Five groups of two. So I'm going to make another row here. One, two, three. So now I've got five groups of one and five groups of two. So we've taken 15, we've broken it into five and 10, and we've rewritten it as five times one plus five times two. So that is an equivalent expression to 5 plus 10. So 15, 5 plus 10, and 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2 are all what we call equivalent expressions, right? There's all different ways to write the number 15. So we are creating equivalent expressions using the distributive property. So I'm going to create one more. So I've got 5 plus 1, 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2, right? And remember, if I put these guys all together now, if I added them together and stuck them together, I would now have, here was my two, I would now have five, a grid that is five by three. So five times one plus five times two is the exact same thing as five times three. So now I have, right, and I showed, showed, I showed that by, I had the area of one rectangle, which was one, two, three, four, five. Then I had an area of another rectangle, which was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I put my two rectangles together, and now I have a rectangle that is five by three. So five times one plus five times two is the same as five times three, because three is just one plus two, right? That's the whole idea of the distributive um, property. So now we have a number of different expressions for um, 15, we have 15, we have 5 plus 10, we have 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2, and we have 5 times 3, which as I was saying, is just 5 times 1 plus 2. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different equivalent ex expressions, all for the number 15. So these are some pretty um, easy examples. Let's do one, I wouldn't say harder example. But let's start where we're adding two numbers together, right? So let's pick two numbers like 24 plus um, 32, right? Well, they're both even, right? So let's say I wanted you to model this using um, rectangles, right, and arrays, um, and show how that it illustrated. I could write equivalent expressions or show how um, this relates to the area of rectangles or show how this relates to the distributive property, right? So 24 plus 32, they're both even, so they have two as a factor. So you could definitely draw um, a situation where you're like, okay, this is two by 12. I'm not gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, I've got to add one on there, right? Two by 12. Um, and then two by 16. I'm not gonna draw them all out. I'm just gonna say 16, right? So you could do that by two, or you could do one. Two is not the greatest common factor of 24 and 32. Um, eight is, so you could model it using eight, right? So you could do, okay, it was 24 plus 32, right? You could say, all right, eight times three is your 24 plus eight times four, right? We don't have to draw in the squares every time once we get the hang of this, because you know eight and a rectangle that's eight by three will have an um, area of 24, and a rectangle that is eight by four will have an area of 32, okay? So here we've shown that we're modeling 24 plus 32, right? So how can I write an equivalent expression using the greatest common factor? 
and the distributive property. Well, I've got 8 times 3 plus 8 times 4, right? That's an equivalent expression using the distributive property. If I actually put these together, I would have, right? I would have a square that is 8 by 7, right? So this is still 24 and this is 32, right? So, but I would have a bigger rectangle that's 8 by 7. So 8 times 3 plus 8 times 4 is the same as 8 times 7, right? Because 7 is just 3 plus 4, okay? So I have 8 plus 3, sorry, 8 times 3 plus 8 times 4 is equivalent to 8 times 7, which is equivalent times 8 <clears throat> times 3 plus 4 in parentheses. So what does that actually equal? Well, 8 times 7, we all know, is 56, right? So let's check. Let's just make sure that this all, in fact, adds up to 56. 32 and 24, 6, 5. Check. Yes, it does. So you might be saying, Mr. Vick, this seems like a lot of, like, messing around for just adding 24 and 32. And you're absolutely right. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to add 24 and 32. But the idea of what it represents, this idea of the distributive property, like I said, is incredibly important um, for you going forward mathematically. So to understand what is the distributive property and why does it actually work, right? Why is 8 times 3 um, plus 8 times 4 the same as 8 times 7, right? Why does this actually work and that you could show that using rectangles is really important. Hope you enjoyed my video. See you again soon.